because I love making people uncomfortable. It's just like one of my favorite things to do. Even if it's not through music, like I love being in a lift with my mum and having the most inappropriate conversation to her and her being like, fuck sake. How do you feel about the release of your new album, Skin? How do I feel? I feel like I just want it to be out, but at the same time, I don't want it to be out. And at the same time, I'm really excited. And at the same time, I'm super nervous. You know, it's like giving up my child for like, not adoption, but like going to secondary school or something, you know, it's like the big world. How did you come up with the sound of Skin? I did have ideas in my head, but it just felt like stuff that wasn't achievable because I'd never been able to record like a full string section. I'd never been able to record like a whole brass section. I'd never been able, you know, the things I had in my mind that I wanted to do felt very out of reach, but they weren't. So I actually got to do them, but that's why it, the soundscape is the way it is because those are all the things I've always wanted to do sonically and just never had the chance to financially. Could you describe the sound? It's it's like a journey, I think. It's like oh, as cheesy as that sounds. It's a bit like going through, if we're going to make it a German comparison, <laughs> it feels a bit like driving through Berlin because like there's just so many different pieces of history and architecture in Berlin. And I'm not saying that I made the album at all inspired by, by Berlin, unfortunately, but I just think that it has so many different like street corners and beautiful buildings and then like a weird sandwich on the floor. And then, you know, it's just very mixed, but it all fits in one. Do you reflect on yourself on Poison? I think it's more fear. So even though it sounds like I'm reflecting, I think the thing in that song is, it's kind of like fear that I'm going to turn into like a family member I, I don't like at the time. Does that make sense? You know, when you have like a huge fight with like an uncle and then you're like, oh shit, am I like, am I like that uncle? Am I, am I going to be like that? Or am I doing that same thing? Because we're related, so maybe I'm just exactly the same. Um, and that's probably where the reflection comes from. What's the meaning behind the voice messages that are scattered across the album? It's context. So I've always been interested in like, my favorite subject at school is history. And the reason why I love history is because you need to know your sources, but also you need to know context. Context is like incredibly important in understanding a piece of history or a story in history, etc. What was going on in that time for this to happen, right? So I see my music in the same way. It's like, I want to show, maybe not the listener, but I want to create a world where I show the the shit around the, like what I'm about to say or the incident. You know, there's like a situation, but a situation is always painted around the fact that you ended up going on that bus that day and then you ended up seeing that person or you didn't mean to bump into them or you did plan to see them or it's given you all of the context before the actual moment of impact. What's the meaning behind the white sari in the music video for Feet Don't Fail Me Now? There's a scene where I'm in a white sari and I'm doing a wheelie on a motorbike and, or moped and there's all these Bangladeshi men around me and this is kind of like the antithesis so I'm actually, that's me standing out. Unfortunately in my culture when you wear a white sari it means you're a widow so your clothing basically tells everyone that your husband is no longer with you, right? So you're defined by your husband's death which I really have, I struggle with that. I struggle with the fact that as women we have to be defined by you know, the person that we love's death, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm wearing the white sari, but almost to like rewrite that narrative and especially being surrounded by Bangladeshi men. I am Bangladeshi and I find that I love my culture to bits, but like most cultures, especially for women, it can be very homogenous. It's very much sit down, stay there. And I wanted to rewrite that narrative in the video because it's actually a flip. It's like, no, and this is what it looks like when I do stand out. How does it feel to be so blunt and direct when it comes to your songwriting? Really cathartic. It's refreshing for me because I love making people uncomfortable. It's just like one of my favorite things to do. Even if it's not through music, like I love being in a lift with my mom and having the most inappropriate conversation to her and her being like, fuck sake. She can never go in a lift with me because she knows I'll come out with something stupid as fuck and everyone in the lift will be like, and I'll be like, so how is that rash? And she'll be like, 
I just like making people uncomfortable because sometimes I think when you twist and break something, you kind of, it's so cheesy, but like, I, I just think when people are uncomfortable, but in a good way, in the sense of when you put awkwardness or you address awkwardness, it actually makes everyone just a lot more relaxed. It's like if you feed people, more meetings need food because actually when you feed people, they're all just so much more relaxed. And also I just think when you're funny or when you're awkward or when you address the elephant in the room, it's much easier to be direct with people. And I think that I love having that in music as well. What are you telling us about the UK with your song Kingdom? Yeah, no, I love the UK. I love Britain. I don't love everything that Britain's done, but I do love, you know, Britain and British. But yeah, I just, I live in a country that has like, in my opinion, one of the shittest leaders and leadership in the world. They're liars and the way that they treat people and the way that they never, ever get held accountable. Prime example is there's this guy, he looks a bit like a pig. He lies to you about this thing called Brexit, basically coerces the entire country to them voting for Brexit when a lot of the T's and C's, terms and conditions, are false. And then hides a little bit, gets a few more women pregnant, and then comes back and is not held accountable. He's made the prime minister, and that's the UK. That's the prime minister, that's Boris Johnson. So it's just, I, it fucks me off. It fucks me off how they treat um, immigrants. It fucks me off how they just, <laughs> I, you know what, if I start, I won't stop. I just don't think that the UK and leaders in the UK are ever held accountable. And I think that the power of music, the power of punk music, the power of protest music is that you can hold people accountable. And more importantly, you can try and leave a message. And I think for me, it's really important that the young generation are protected because they clearly don't have the majority's best interest in heart. It's, the, it's actually the 1% that they, of course, have at heart. So yeah, that's Kingdom. <laughs> How do you stay optimistic about the future? Eat nice food. Because food is a form of resistance, actually. Every time you eat, no, I, you, I thought about this once, I had a lot of time on my hands, but when you eat, you're fueling your body to stay alive. And that is an act of resistance, right? So eating, I like having, like, I like small talk. Because I think that like they did scientific studies on small talk and actually because we've had like a year and a half of no small talk, it's actually quite bad for us as like a society. So I've decided I like small talk, even though I generally hate it. So I'm trying to learn how to be better at that, which makes me feel like a more fulfilled human being. I like keeping promises to myself. So, you know, making an album, I've always wanted to do that. So I kept that promise to myself. And then when I keep promises to myself and actually achieve them and not, nothing outlandish, you know, like I don't have a vision board, <laughs> but like I respect anyone that does, but they just make me laugh. No, but there's something so funny about vision boards. But to me, it's just like, if I promise myself that I want to do something and I do it, it makes me trust myself more. And it makes me feel like a more fulfilled human being. And that feeling then turns into more self-esteem, more confidence, more self-assurance. And I feel like I can navigate the world kinder and more compassionately when I'm that kind of person. What is next for Joe Crooks? I have a UK tour this year and then I have a European tour next year. I just really want to get fitter again. I feel like I haven't exercised enough, so I need to do that. I've always said that I want to learn how to bake again, but as a gluten intolerant person, I just don't recommend baking. It's just kind of like a soulless interaction. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'd probably start, I'd probably need to start writing a second album as well at some point. Maybe it's time for a now. Maybe, but also I want to go shopping. <laughs> so just things on my list. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs>